I want to wish everybody well in the middle of this coronavirus catastrophe. And I want you to know that everything's going to be all right. Welcome to Southern Cooking Made Simple. Today, I'm going to give you guys my stay-at-home version of a ramp fest in the West Virginia mountains. Here we have something in the Appalachian Mountains called the Feast of the Rampson. And it's at a neighboring city by us every spring. And this year, I'm recreating that Feast of the Rampson here at my house. And I'm going to give you guys a tour. First, I want you to fry up about a half a pound of bacon, and I chopped mine up pretty good. Fry up a half a pound of the bacon, either chopped or in big pieces, that's up to you, and set that aside and reserve your grease. Then I want you to take in a big pot and bring to boil, put about half of the pot full of water, and clean the ramps up until they're impeccably clean, splitting the top leaf so you can get the dirt. That's where the dirt hides and open that top leaves and rinse that out real good and then they're ready to drop down in the boiling water and don't leave them down in the boiling water very long at all maybe a total of three minutes if that and get them out of there because you don't want to do anything but set the sugar in the ramp that's all you're not cooking it you're setting the sugar what you're doing is blanching that ramp and you're setting the sugars inside of the ramp and you're keeping the texture by not bringing them to a full rolling bowl. If you bring them to a full rolling bowl, you will lose so much integrity of your ramp and taste because you're just going to dump some of your flavor down the drain when you dump it off. Now drain those out in your sink and set them to the side. You want to let those cool completely before taking a real sharp knife and then chopping them into pieces if you prefer or you can leave them long like spaghetti. Now we're going to start on the fried potatoes and ramps. And today I put some Vidalia onion in mine. First, after you fried your bacon, you need to remove the grease from the pan and that pan has to be cleaned, scrubbed and washed. If you don't put water in it and boil that bacon out, where that sugar set on the bottom of the pan, it'll make your potatoes burn. I've seen some people start from there and just cook their potatoes in the pan and they wonder why their potatoes and ramps stick. You got to clean the cast iron skillet. Now I'm using a huge skillet today and my demonstration, here's what I want you to do. Put the potatoes into the hot pan of grease and only put in about two tablespoons of bacon grease and one tablespoon of butter. When you put the potato in the skillet, let them sit there for five minutes without touching them. Let them cook without a lid, flip them over after the five minutes, salt and pepper them, let them sit there again for five minutes before you flip them again, and then that's when you add your ramps and bacon and stuff on top and salt and pepper. Now letting set them sit there for that first five minutes or so lets them french fry on the bottom and gives them a yummy taste. It's very important that you let them sit there for the five minutes on medium before you flip them over, salt and pepper, and then put in the ramps. And once you put your ramps in, then you start to use a lid. And you'll use a lid throughout the rest of this demonstration. Put them in there, and you drop your potatoes in that hot skillet with that hot grease. They start to sizzle and fry immediately. And you don't put a lid on. You just let them sit right there and french fry on the bottom and you let all of that dissipate for five minutes before you touch those potatoes. And then you flip them over and you let them fry another five minutes before you add the other toppings. Uh, you've already flipped them two times, you'll see the brown on the bottom. Now when you go to cooking your ramps, you have to get off all the water. Now for my biscuit recipe, I just used my basic recipe is two and a half cups of flour, a cup of buttermilk, enough water to make it runny, and I use self-rising flour and once you put that out all you have to do is use your spoon to ladle that out over in your pan you don't have to make a big mess it's called spoon bread just take a big spoon and take a big dollop of that out and put it out onto your pan you don't have to cut out biscuits every time just take a big spoon of it put it out onto your pan press them down with a wet hand sprinkle a little bit of flour on top put them in the oven on 400 bake them until they're uh, real good and brown on the bottom then turn the oven on broil and broil them on the top until they're just brown 
when you remove them from the oven where you put laid them down in that oil they're good and crunchy on the bottom and you flip them over to make them stay good and crunchy on the bottom and gives you a real good crunchy on the bottom and the top and velvety smooth in the middle next we're going to do a quiche i fried a quarter of a cup of ramps chopped fine for a one minute over very little heat just enough to make them sweat just a little bit and get them off the heat quickly then i want you to stir in your scrambled eggs with salt and pepper and a little bit of water to make them fluffy and then you uh, mix all that together and put in pour that in and crumble some of that bacon in there that you fried earlier and some cheese and then i put that in the oven and baked that on 350 until it was golden brown on the top this was delicious just that little bit of fried ramps kicks those delicious scrambled eggs cooked into this uh, quiche or frittata in the oven it's absolutely delicious you guys are going to love this recipe frying the ramps now when you fry your ramps in bacon grease and i used about uh, the rest of the grease that was on that half a pound of bacon that's the drippings that i used to fry these ramps in and i put the rest of that bacon in with this and I put about a quarter of a cup over into the quiche or frittata, whatever you call that thing. Now, when you're frying your ramps after you've boiled them, all you're trying to do is fry off some of that moisture. See where I'm frying them down till the moisture has released from the pan? If you don't fry them down until you get rid of that moisture, then you have to deal with all that water in your ramps. So after you've drained them in the sink and you get all the water out that way, then you boil whatever water's left in the ramps you boil that out and as soon as that water dissipates then that's when you put in your bacon and they're ready to salt and pepper and eat enjoy now i done some ham beans i cooked a pot of pinto beans and i first cooked them until they got that foam up on top of them that black foam and that's the gas and i dumped them off and drained them and then i put them back in my pot covered them up in water and boiled them boiled them for about two hours with a ham bone salt and pepper and about a quarter of a stick of butter your beans are only as good as the butter you put in them even though i had ham my grandma used to tell me your beans are only as good as how much butter you've put in them uh, this is a delicious recipe. We all get to enjoy our Feast of the Ramson here at the house. We don't have to stand in line up at the high school for two or three hours <laughs> in order to get a plate. It's absolutely delicious. And people think it's harder to cook ramps than it really is. It's not. It's just a fact of dropping them down into some boiling water and get them out. You're just blanching them. You don't want them to be in that water maybe three minutes at the most. You, you put them down in that boiling water, and then bubbles start to come up around the side of that pot. Get them out. You're just blanching them and setting the sugars. That's all. And when you're frying your potatoes, the first two flips, when, you're, when you put it in there, and you let the potatoes french fry on the bottom, that is the most important tip that you're going to pick up out of this whole video is see how they're brown there on top that's just where they sit there for five minutes don't touch them let them sit there and when you flip them over let them sit there again for five minutes and what you're doing is you're french frying the bottom of that potato and doing something that my grandma taught me to do her name was ada marie everybody called her marie and she taught me to sear those potatoes on the bottom without a lid on on two flips Five minutes on one side, flip them over, salt and pepper, five minutes on the other side. Then add your ramps and stuff and put the lid on. And at that point, you start to steam them. And that gets them done in the middle. And the brownness and the french frying of the potato gives it that yummy scorched. Uh, you're caramelizing the sugars in those potatoes. This is a really good meal. You're going to love it. Straight from the mountaintops of West Virginia. When you take your ramps and 
try to get all the water that you can out in your sink. It won't all drain out. There's some water in those ramps. And that is your juices, your natural juices and flavors that need to be fried down. See how I'm cooking that off? Slide your ramps to one side and let that boil real good. And that gets all that water out of your ramps. And as you condense that and fry that down, that creates a real yummy thickness and those juices concentrate. See there? You don't want to fry your ramps that much. Get the ramps, and if your skillet isn't as big as mine is, take them out of the pan while you boil down those, those drippings. But it's very important that you condense those juices. Don't just throw them off or something. Those juices that come out of those ramps, that's your flavor right there. When you're cooking that down, you just need to get the juices out of the ramps, and they're ready to eat. And you got to watch them like a hawk, because if you let them sit there very long, they'll scorch. Because as soon as that sea right there, as soon as it's gone, as soon as those juices are gone, almost gone, about two tablespoons left in there, turn them off and get them out because they'll scorch. The sugars are released and they will scorch very quickly. You can burn ramps quicker than a rabbit. If you think you can walk in the, uh, to the sink and wash your hands and uh, check on the kids, as soon as you see that those uh, juices have almost dissipated all get them out of the pan because they scorch real quick even if you think you can scoot them to the side the uh, heat that's left in that skillet can scorch your ramps and you'll come back to look for your ramps later and they'll be sitting there with black up underneath them they won't even be worth eating because all the sugars will have caramelized and burned next I made a coconut cream pie I took a basic uh, vanilla recipe and made a basic custard with one cup of sugar, four tablespoons of flour, mix those together, add two cups of milk to that, and when you bring that up to a boil, as it boils there, then it's done. Then you add in the remaining ingredients. As soon as it comes to a boil, add in one teaspoon of vanilla and one cup of coconut, and it's ready to go into your pie shell. I made one pie shell out of one stick of butter and one and a half cups of flour, one quarter cup of water. My meringue was made out of three room temperature egg whites, and after I beat them about a half a minute or a minute, I put in a quarter cup of sugar and a half a teaspoon of vanilla and beat them until they had peaks, and I put it on top and sprinkled some coconut, and then I toasted that in the oven under broil uh, long enough to get it just a little bit of color on top. Enjoy your Feast of the Ramps, and it's been a beautiful sunny day here today, almost 70 degrees. I've had my four puppies outside playing. The sun's all shining, and uh, it's a beautiful day here in the mountains. A perfect day for the Feast of the Rampson, and I want to thank everybody that stopped by my channel today to give it a look. You're really going to like this stuff. It's stuff that my grandparents passed down to my parents, and now my parents passed down to me, and I'm going to pass that one down and give that to y'all. So y'all have a good day, and stay strong. Wear a mask. Wash your hands for 20 seconds. Don't go out unless you absolutely have to. Go to the post office late at night and wait a week or so to go before you do go. When you get home, make sure that you've wore your mask all the time you've been out. Go uh, take some Clorox wipes or some type of sanitizer and sanitize your car, your steering wheel, your gear shift, your seat belt holder, the car seat, the doorknob, anything that you touched, the doorknob at your house. Go in and drop your clothing directly into a washer and wash it all, even your jacket. If you have someone in quarantine, keep the door shut. Let them use a separate bathroom. Do not share that person's space. Their respiratory droplets are infectious to you and your loved ones. Do not pass this virus along to someone else. Wear a mask. If they are in quarantine, shut the door and leave the door shut the whole quarantine time, 14 days. I'm going to have to get off of here. My dogs <laughs> are tearing up Jack. I guess y'all heard him back here turning everything over and te tearing up stuff. <laughs> I'll keep you updated and thank goodness for now. We've got a wellness report here from the Appalachian Mountains and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye. Be safe.